What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Mythic Heroes, and today we're going to be going over pretty much like our beginner's guide for those of you who are looking to jump into the game, you just started the game, you're looking for more information. We have, I think, just about everything unlocked in game now on our own account, we're level 96, yes we have VIP, it's just how Barry Gaming works, but we're going to go over all the different game modes, all the different tabs, we're going to explain to you what's usually worth value, what you want to try to focus on, things like that, but let's start it off with the campaign so the campaign is going to be like the first thing you unlock is going to be two different campaign modes you'll notice down here the main one and then there is an elite one the nice thing about this game compared to afk arena is if you really don't enjoy multi lineup fights just stick and have fun with the main combat you of course have the elite as well uh we'll show you the difference here so for the main battles here you'll go in and there are a couple things you can do you'll notice you have five heroes to deploy you can do two different types of setup you can have three heroes in the front or three heroes in the back you can move your heroes around wherever you want there's filters to look at your different heroes that you have here all of them all that fun stuff as well as breaking it down by tanks, fighters, mages, support, all of that as well. You'll notice there's two little spirals down here. These are going to be your faction aura bonuses. So the way it works in this game is the one that you have the majority in the most is going to give you a bonus. And then minority is going to give you final damage bonuses as well. So you kind of want to focus on majority. Minority, if you can get them, is a really cool way to do it too. Full faction, of course, will... Uh, be pretty beneficial if you can but i wouldn't really prioritize the aura if you have certain heroes in certain factions that are very very good you'll notice there's a boss here nua um these are not the typical fights you'll see but we are on the final fight of the chapter we'll jump into it we'll go down to one time speed just so you can get a feel for how the combat is here i really really like it uh you can set up auto right here and one of the biggest features that i love about this game is this little computer right here this is auto assault activation which means it will continuously try to fight the battles over and over to a certain extent it's not going to go on forever i think it gives you like three or four failed attempts and then it'll pause but it'll essentially just keep refighting the battle for you over and over until you either get a victory or you lose too many times. Now, this is really nice if you have really powered up your account. You'll notice the timer starts ticking right here, which is very convenient. It just jumps into the next battle. You'll notice there's this little backwards arrow here. That, after the first five seconds of combat, if you see something's like... Yeah, no, I'm not, I know I'm not going to win this. You can just auto restart it without changing anything in your lineup over and over and over. These two features are two of the best features I've seen in idle games in a while where you don't have to manually sit here. If you know you're strong enough, you can do 10, 20, 30. You can do a whole chapter before you need to be present at your computer or at your phone to keep progressing. So that's the regular campaign. You'll see there's a memoir here where you get scrolls to do your summonings and such for beating certain chapters. That is amazing. Uh, there's also the elite version. So the elite version ramps up from two to three to more fights where you have to set up multiple lineups and do the same thing that you're used to in like an AFK arena, a mobile legends. You need to win all three of them to progress. Uh, again, I'm not the biggest fan of that style of combat. I really don't like the multi-combat. That's why I mainly focus on just getting as much progress as I can in the main. And then Elite, I just sometimes do it. Uh, but there are two different campaign modes, and they're broken up very nicely. Now, another sort of campaign is Hades Hell. So this one here is similar. Uh, you'll be getting certain bonuses for completing certain uh, amounts of the areas here. This one here is a single fight as well, so it's a really nice way to go into it. Uh, pretty much the same as campaign, just a little bit different of a game mode. You usually don't progress as fast as that as in campaign, but it is what it is. Next up, we have Trial of Ascension. So this right here is going to be what you're smashing daily to get your coins, to get your experience, to get your, uh, your uh, I forget the name of it. 
essentially this is going to be your promotion materials your ascension materials to level up your heroes further uh, but this is where you're going to be grinding it every day most of the time you're if you're not making tons of progress on your account you're just going to come in here and hit pillage one two three one two three it doesn't take much time it is very convenient the other one is the zodiac caverns so zodiac caverns are important they're broken up into five different areas and this is where you're going to be leveling up your weapons for your heroes you can of course attack every day you can hit them this is where you're going to get your soul seals that are going to be very important we'll talk about a little bit later you can look to see what you're at on all of them good progression the more of them you can get the better six attempts per day so you can either attack to try to progress every day or you can just do a pillage which is just an auto battle it finishes the battle instantaneously and you move on from there which is really really great and the last one is the divine chronicles so this if you're from idle heroes is like your faction sea lands if you're from afk arena or mobile legends it's like your faction towers progression but the way they do it in this game is very very cool so it's essentially a story mode for that faction so luminar you basically go along and it tells you a story as you go through all the levels so if you're really into lore in a game this game does an amazing job of explaining the lore of each faction there will be different types of battles you have to do as you go through this uh you can hit progression mode here which just gets rid of all the story and if you just don't care about the story hit progression mode it just gives you what you're active on there's some stages where are there simply time limits that's why i have three of them up you have to wait one hour six hours 12 hours before you can continue on once you wait that amount of time you get a reward and you move on to more battles and you can keep progression there are optional operations that you can do as well that have usually somewhere between nine and 15 stages. Do those as much as possible. They're gonna give you tons of hero copies for food. They're gonna give you other resources. They're very, very good. And then there's ones like this, the very big one, Terrifying News. It's simply a read and get rewards and keep progressing. So it is a very, very cool system they have in here. I wanna make sure I complete all these real quick because I, I was stuck on a lot of these here. This is actually a perfect example to show you one of the operations. So you unlock both the operation and the next battle. The operation is 100% optional. You can get tons of different mystery chest fragments. You can get the SR hero fragments, which are pure food. You don't build SR heroes in this game. So just remember that is a really cool way of doing a tower seal land type thing. If you're used to other games, I really like it. I really, really enjoy it. The only other thing on the campaign stage is the Pantheon. So the Pantheon has 27 levels, but they're not even fighting levels. You'll do different things to increase your bravery or your wisdom bonuses. You can click around here and kind of figure it out yourself pretty easily. But you do this, I believe, every two days. Uh, it's actually, you know, it might be every day. I can't remember, honestly. But this is where you can get different relics to power up your heroes. It's kind of like Expedition, but... I actually like this more than Expedition, personally. I, I like the way this is set up. You have different blessings for heroes that can give them bonuses. Uh, you have your heroes, of course, as well, but it's, it's really cool. I like Pantheon. It's not as grindy as it feels in like Expeditions in other games, so I definitely, definitely like it. Next up, we're going to jump over to Kingdom because there's a ton of buildings here. The Guild is one thing you want to join immediately. You have the Wishing Fountain, which you can hit once a day for free resources. You have the Research Center, which is really cool so this is like guild research where your guild master can tell you where they want you to put your resources so like here i wanted to save them up so i could show you how that works you can use all your red resources in the wraith tree all your uh i guess we'll call them purple in this tree and instead of trying to guess where it needs to go if you have a guild master that knows where they want to invest the stuff you put the star and then have everybody do the same thing you'll notice there's also these energized ones that you can use elsewhere I typically like using them in the Wraith tab personally, but you can kind of pick where you want to go. Guild Market, that's just the store. So we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Coliseum is essentially guild battles where you go and you fight other guilds. We can't show the battlefield right now, but essentially you just set up your team lineup. You let it go into combat and that's all you got to do. It's very, very simple and you get some cool rewards at the end of every single week. Okay, Lobby. Not much to do here unless you're looking to manage, leave the guild, search for guilds, things like that. You can see some scores of what people are doing as well as far as guild progression and such, which is cool. Uh, 
Guild Daemons. So this is going to be your guild boss that you're going to fight. You have the regular one here that you're going to hit every day. And then you have another one that you kill as a guild and you progress further and further and you get more resources against the war dragons. Uh, we'll talk about better team lineups that you can use for things like this. But for today, we're just, just going over these really quick. And then lastly, you have the fortune altar. So this is where you can get some bonus resources at the end of the week based on the amount of activity and progression you give to your guild. You'll acquire more and more coins that you can then roll at the end of the week, get some extra of these uh, nice diamonds, some other resources like the Gears of Time for the Astrolobe, potentially some really good stuff too. So this is something that's kind of passive. You just come in here once a week, you use up your progression and you're done. Next up is the museum. This is where you're going to be getting a lot of power for your account. You'll notice here, these are the stat bonuses to your heroes, and those are required by upgrading your heroes to different tiers. Simply getting a hero unlocks one of them, leveling them up to, you, to different levels like Mythic and all these Infinite, Celestial. It gives you more upgrades you can do. So even though... You might only have like a couple copies of Lilith, but you already have infinite one on your Lucifer. It doesn't matter. You can still upgrade and those will all give you bon bonus points contributing to your celestial exposition or expo expedition <laughs> exhibition. There we go. I got the right word finally. So that one, you're just going to go in and claim some stuff. You get some rewards, which is pretty cool. Arena, there's two different game modes for Arena. Simply your server battles here, which are cool, just a single combat. And then Master Mind Arena is a little different than what you're used to. So essentially what Master Mind Arena is, I'll show you a fight right here. So this one's kind of cool. You have three precursor fights that give you bonuses for your main combat. So you can lose all three of the first fights, but still win the main that's fine, you win the victory. But the whole point is to go through all of these combats here and it gives you bonuses. I'll show you what it actually looks like here. So we'll go through a fight, we'll skip it. And you can see at the end, which ones you have won and which ones you have lost that give you bonuses. So yeah, it's kind of a cool way to do it. You need multiple lineups, which is interesting. You're pretty much used to this style of pvp next up we have the leaderboard leaderboard is just the the flex zone but the nice thing about it is every week you can hit a thumbs up here to get 50 gems and then for rewards you get rewards for progression that your server mates make so even if you're not pushing far you're still getting those bonus gems which is a nice little bonus they have it for main campaign elite campaign hades hell and then all of the divine chronicles so these are really really cool uh summoner sanctum Let's go to this one right here. There are three different types of summons to do in the Summoner Sanctum. Number one are just the standard summons. These are the basic standard summon scrolls that you get all the time. You can click on this. You can watch the animation if you want. You notice the animation changes depending on what type of hero it is. So this one right here, we're getting a pure food hero that's just going to be disassembled immediately. Uh, at certain summon marks, you get more resources. You get the soul seals, which is really good. This upgrades as you become a higher level. You won't have these right away. And then at 100 summons, you have a chance to pick from four different hero copies. So three of them are static. If you don't like any of the three options they give you, the fourth one just gives you a random SSR hero. So it's up to you. But these are decent. Um, usually what I do is I save my diamonds up for when I want something here. So... In the limited summons, you have an increased chance to get specific heroes here. The first one here is pick default. The left side is usually uh, your new non-UR hero, just SSR. And the last one here is nice because you can pick what hero you want to go for. And you have more chances to actually get the hero. So it's pretty cool. I like the way they do limited summons. And then lastly, they have faction summons with faction scrolls. Uh, these are basically you can manually swap if you want, but you have to pay diamonds. I really don't recommend that. I just wait until it gets to the faction you want because then you're only summoning for that faction's heroes and it might be better for something you're trying to build. But these you can't use diamonds on. These cost 3,000. These cost 2,700. Again, usually just save up for limited summons uh, and then use faction scrolls as you get them. Next up, we have the marketplace. So there's, I think, six different markets. Number one is the general. There's stuff for your guild coin, your gold coins, and then there's stuff for diamonds. Of course, here, normally I just say buy the things that come up for gold that are of use. Um, 
The Stardust is nice to get every day down here. Sometimes I'll get the Soul Seals depending on which one it is. And then, of course, I try to always grab these right here, the, uh, the Divinity Upgrade materials. Those are always good. You can grab Divinity Gems, too, if you need them, but it just depends on if you need them on your account. I'm actually going to buy these. Those are good. Next up, you have guild rewards. So normally I stay away from these SR vouchers because again, they're just food heroes. The ones I like going for are of course the Stardust and of, of course the Cogs. The Cogs are important because that's gonna be like your idle rewards. I love grabbing these when I can. I buy this pretty much daily because I almost always need to keep progressing. Next up is Pantheon. So Pantheon is the first place you can get some hero copies. And I highly suggest to go for a couple different heroes here. Number one, Athena is a great one if you're building her as a tank. Uh, GNM is a great early game hero to carry. So this is very easy to get his carry copies. And then once you progress to the later game, Naga is a great one to go for too. Most early game players should probably go for G GM. Maybe, maybe people would just call him GM there's a lot of hard names in this game so gm's a great one to go for here i've really never touched anything else in this shop besides the hero copies you might want to do the same arena is where you can get your ur hero copies this is probably the best spot to go for loose for copies that you can get once a month uh, if you really get a ton of progression in arena you can get a new copy as well she's very very good and there's some other decent heroes down here um, I, I grabbed her. You can grab Sus Susano copies as Anami. There's a bunch of different options you can go to, but this arena again is kind of for the hero copies that I would say. Tribute is for extra summons. I usually just save up until I can get SSR hero shards. Otherwise, I feel like inherited divinity is a nice way to go. If you really want to go for cube fragments, which we haven't talked about yet, you can do that as well. And then prestige. I just try to grab the bottom two whenever I have enough prestige for something. Um, you could save up for 30,000, but it takes quite a bit. So it's up to you. Next up, we have Fable Argo Agora. This is your daily quest system where you just send out your heroes on missions and you get stuff. There's many different tiers. You can even see you can get hero copies from this, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can get resources. You can get faith, which is going to be part of the divinity system. You can get more of these gears of time cogs for more progression. There's a ton of different quests. And as you get to certain numbers of each type of quest, like this one right here, is a heroic deed this one right here is a legend of gods they complete more so as you upgrade these you get one of these unlocked as you get five of these you unlock one of these and so on and so forth it's a pretty cool system and lastly is the alchemy workshop this is where you're going to be upgrading your equipment you have all of your uh your artifacts here you also have the runes that you're using which we'll talk about briefly when we get to the heroes this is just where you're going to be upgrading all your stuff you can have it auto dismantle anything in the low tiers which after a while is probably a good idea and yeah that pretty much covers the kingdom next up is going to be the astrolobe so the astrolobe is where your idle materials is going to progress you can do your gears of time it will get collect over time you can speed it up by clicking it a second time and it'll auto complete it you have an inner wheel which is basically like a daily bonus that you can get usually you get some of the chests down here i don't think i've ever gotten the ur hero shard sadly but it's pretty cool and then you also have your cube upgrade so you can see here we've already gone through three cubes there's six sides to every cube this right here is essentially giving you bonuses whether it's in combat or astrolobe levels up things like that there's a lot of different bonuses just pretty much as you get them put the points in and progress now there's a couple things here there's a wardrobe if you unlock different wardrobes you can put it here Astrolobe of Fate is like the premium, premium summon here. So on this wheel, essentially, there's a bunch of different stuff. You can pick a UR hero to go on the wheel. You can pick an SSR hero to go on the wheel. And there's a couple other big bonuses. Like, I think it's like 50 of them or something like that. Does it actually tell you? Uh, 100 Fate Crystals. So there's a chance you get 100 of them. There's a chance to get 50,000 diamonds. There's a ton of stuff. And essentially, I'll just spin the wheel once, waste my diamonds for you. You'll see how it is. You click the middle, you get your reward. I really say stay away from this. Unless you're specifically hunting a UR hero. But again, I feel like doing normal summons is going to be the better progression for you overall. 
Moving over to the bag, of course, this is the typical equipment bag. You'll see you'll have your hero copies. You'll have your items that you can pull out of the bag here. You got some rune fragments that you can upgrade. You have SSR hero shards. That's good. I want a dune. A dune. And then you have the food SR heroes. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Journal has daily quests weekly quest and achievements to unlock just claim them whenever you get them try to focus on finishing your weeklies and last but not least um before we talk about the heroes themselves there's the mail system there's the friend system which is important to make sure you're sending hearts every day because this friendship chest gives some decent rewards so make sure you're doing that you of course have the campaign memoir where you get your scrolls pretty self-explanatory anytime there's a new hero there's a pop-up for a first time purchase of ten dollars if you really want to do it there's your daily login rewards there is your event center which has all your extra events going on and then there is the store the typical store you're used to weekly monthly diamonds daily deals there's a free one every day in here passes these are pretty good value i think the pantheon and the hero pass for progression if you're looking to spend a little bit the subscription so the permanent subscription is definitely a must buy i feel like for most players you're going to get a ton of resources every day i don't really do any of the other uh, subscriptions sometimes i do like the monthly the supreme one me personally i don't but you get those every single day the carnival very expensive 100 dollars, but you're getting a ton of hero copies over 30 days up to you if you want to buy it there are some specials as far as progression packs. These are usually very good diamond value for purchasing these. These are going to give you uh, diamonds based on the chapters that you complete. There are skins in the game too that I haven't done any of. And then there's an actual overall VIP system that gives rewards. So yeah, be warned there's a VIP system. Now let's jump into the last part I want to talk about. And that is the hero. So number one, portraits going in here and unlocking portraits when you get a new hero there will be a little gem up the top right hand corner it gets you 100 free diamonds which is really nice but you can go ahead and look at any single hero in the game they put a little tag for new heroes that are in the game as well uh heroes is your overall hero list you can set up default teams if you want to mix and match and change your different teams and there's also a cool popularity ranking show you what the most popular heroes are in certain here in brackets and such wow iphone really big in the end game content early game you can see what heroes are used and you can check that out for anything but lastly let's go over heroes because there's a lot of different systems here number one um let's actually jump into a hero that has some buttons we can click Let's go over here so number one you can purely level up your hero with resources if you don't have enough you can hit the level up button and it'll show you what resources you have to use that's cool and all it shows you exactly what you need that's great there's a ton of information on the screen there's multiple ways to increase the power of your heroes number one is the enhancement system so this is what i was talking about where you use hero copies uh like just rare copies to awaken your heroes this is where you don't build the regular heroes in the game. The the Any purple heroes down here, you don't build them because they're going to be used as fodder to enhance your heroes. You'll see I have level 30, level 22, level 20. This is the enhancement system, and this is unlocked through the divinity that we'll go over here in a second. The other way to upgrade heroes is ascension. So you're going to need hero copies to increase them in the lower tiers of levels. So if we go way down the bottom here to like typhoon it takes only one copy to progress them up you go from yellow to orange from orange to red to red to white and white to rainbow you can kind of see the uh the progression here so you go from yellow ssr heroes to orange and then they upgrade to red then they upgrade to white and eventually to rainbow you can tell there's different stars here too level one level two level three you get the drift of it uh it's a interesting way to do it you're gonna need a lot of hero copies like a lot of hero copies so be prepared there's also a way when you do upgrade your weapon to certain tiers you'll unlock special looks of your weapon so like for lucifer you can turn the weapon off and turn it back to the original skin or you can have the weapon showing which is pretty cool now let's jump over to that weapon we're talking about as you level up your weapon through different breakpoints, you're going to unlock more and more features for your weapon here. You can see on all of them, they get different types of upgrades as they get to higher attribute numbers. The way to do that is going to be by using these soul steals. These soul steals are what you're going to get from different game modes. These are going to upgrade and unlock different tiers. 
cost coins gold just to unlock them in the first place but you'll notice at different tiers you have different things unlocked when you get to level 400 on this item which is basically just 400 points throughout all these things so like we can we can actually take the time and upgrade this right now maybe get close to it i don't think we're gonna quite get there are we might no i don't think we have enough resources overall but that'll unlock the next tier of it which will be in reducing the cooldown things like that the weapon is cool there's skins for certain heroes as well if you haven't unlocked i don't it is what it is next up we have divinity so divinity is where your bonus abilities are going to come from this is where using these divinity gems are going to come from and i love one thing about this game you can click on just about everything and it'll tell you what it is, what it name is, all that fun stuff. So number one is you have your divinity tree. Let me actually go to our main hero that we have maxed out. So your divinity tree has a total of 18 levels. And the main column you want to try to focus on is the center one. The main reason is because you have enhanced limits and you also have these divinity points. The center column, I don't think ever costs any divinity points. You also have generic divinity points that can be used on any hero, which are the gold ones. The blue ones are specifically for your hero that you get as you level the hero's divinity up. But you'll notice this is where you unlock certain abilities. You unlock certain stats and you enhance limit. That's that enhance limit that you use SR heroes to feed to your main heroes to level them up to level 30 overall. But you get other abilities along the way too that you can equip to your hero. Now there are a couple segments where you'll see they'll branch together. When you get this point and this point together, you'll unlock a plus one to your divinity node. That's talking about these nodes right here when you come to edit. You have a certain number of nodes that you can use and certain abilities cost different amount of divinity nodes. So as long as you meet that six, you're fine. You can use less than that if you want to, but six is the max and you're gonna upgrade and get that through unlocking these branch nodes. So you can have this point here and this point here, you'll get this one, but you won't get this one until you unlock this divinity node as well. Lastly, and not least at all is going to be your equipment. So there are multiple different types of equipment you can do. If you hit quick equip down the bottom, it'll show you all the different options and it'll throw them in there for you. But you can see what each one does. Each hero has a better, of course, equipment to use for them. And then of course, after that, there's also these runes. These runes are like set bonuses. If you go and you change one of these runes right here, you're gonna lose certain bonuses. So you still get what the rune gives you, but you lose the overall equip three. If you equip all three, you will get a bonus down the bottom, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool. I need to exchange. I don't know why I'm doing that. There we go. We get our nice highest level stuff set up. So that pretty much is the heroes there. So that is the general gist of everything in the game. Again, you can also come up here. And one thing I do suggest is you can change your name and you can also pick your account you can register your account with your google play or your facebook that way you never lose your data if for some reason your phone dies or something there's servers there's cd key codes which will probably have a separate video coming up very soon here just for all the cd key codes in the game as well hopefully you guys enjoy this one let me know what you guys think i'm gonna try to put out some like kind of daily content for mythic heroes i hope you guys enjoy the game as well because i'm having a blast playing it my wallet's not having a blast personally, but it is not a game that you really have to spend that much. I might be starting a free to play account as well. We'll have to see how much time I have taking care of my baby girl and all that stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Hopefully you guys are enjoying Mythic Heroes and I'll see you guys next time.